Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. He was a very strong man, but facing an enemy beyond his own strength. His wife grew gravely ill and suddenly died, leaving this strong man with a blonde, wide-eyed, not-quite-five-year-old daughter. The service in the town church was heavy with grief. After the burial in the small cemetery, relatives gathered around the man and his daughter. One of the relatives said, bring your little girl and come stay with us for a few days. You, you shouldn't be by yourselves at a time like this. Brokenhearted as he was, the man said, thank you for the kind offer, but uh, we need to go back to where my wife was. Uh, my daughter and I need to face this together. So the two returned to a home that now seemed lifeless and empty. That night the man dragged the girl's bed into his own room so that they could face the darkness of that night together. The minutes dragged into hours, the little girl unable to fall asleep, the father not able to sleep either. What pierces the soul of a man more deeply than a child sobbing for a mother who is never coming back? The girl continued to weep into the wee hours of the night. The man provided what comfort he could, reaching over to her bed and patting her. Eventually, she settled down. But she settled down not so much into sleep, but into a quietness out of her sorrow for her father. The father, thinking that she was asleep, brokenly started to pray to God. I trust you, Father, but it is so dark, midnight. And when the daughter heard her father's words, she began to weep again. Oh, I'm sorry, he said. I thought, I thought that you were asleep. She said, I tried, Daddy. I, I was sorry for you, and I tried to go to sleep, but I couldn't go to sleep. Daddy, did you ever believe it could be so dark? Daddy, Daddy, I can't even see you when it's so dark. And then through her whisper, she said, Daddy, when it's so dark, do you love me? When I can't see you, Daddy, do you still love me? The man's answer was taking his massive hands and bringing that little almost five-year-old to his chest where she finally was comforted and went to sleep. When he was very sure that he, she was asleep this time, he tried prayer again. Father, it is so dark. Father, do you love me in the dark? Father, even when I can't see you, do you love me? And the eternal Father reached out with a strength that this man never knew that he had so that he could carry on with his daughter. He came to know that there was one who loved him even in the dark. The days following the crucifixion were dark ones for the disciples and the women. They had to be wondering what God was doing. Where was God's love when Jesus was lying in a tomb? Max Lucado tells a story about a missionary to Brazil who found a, a tribe deep in the jungle this tribe lived next to a huge raging river. And the tribe needed some medical assistance because there was a disease running rampant in the tribe. It seemed like someone was dying most every day. There was a hospital not so far away, but it was across this river. The Indians would not enter into the river because they believed that evil spirits lurked in the water. To go into the river meant certain death. The missionary explained to them that he had come through the water and he was fine. It didn't make any difference to the Indians. 
He took them down to the river bed and splashed some water up to no avail. He walked into the water up to his waist and splashed water around his head, but the tribe did not follow. So he took a deep breath, dove underneath the surface, and swam to the other side of the river. He surfaced on the other side and raised his hand victorious. There was a collective cheer from the tribe, and some of them followed him into the water and across the divide. We have a Savior who has shown us the way across the divide from death into life. One day a little boy was standing on the curb apparently waiting for a bus. A gentleman walked by and offered him some friendly advice. Son, he said, if you want to catch the bus, the bus stop is down on the next corner. That's where the bus picks up passengers. The boy said, that's okay, mister. I think I'll just stand here. The bus, the bus will pick me up. The man offered his suggestion again, but the boy did not move. About that time, the bus comes down the street. Sure enough, the bus pulls over right in front of the boy. The door is open, and he gets up on the steps. He turns back from the steps and says, You see, mister, I knew the bus would stop for me. The driver is my dad. <laughs> ah. So, today you may be facing darkness in the same way that one might face the loss of a wife or a mother. You might be looking into waters of raging uncertainty, not sure of what the future might hold for you. You might be standing right in the spot where you know you need to be. No matter what your circumstance, the resurrection is for you. There is a Savior who has gone to the cross that you might have life. You know, the news, the news of the resurrection isn't so new anymore. We have heard that story so often that when the women are surprised that the stone is rolled away and angels at the tomb, we're not surprised. When Peter runs and looks in and sees the linens by themselves and is in awe, we're not awed. We just kind of nod in agreement. But on this day, this day could you receive the good news in such a way that you are awed that there is one who would come off the cross and live for you? If a researcher today, if a researcher today came up with a definitive cure for cancer, would not there be a global acclamation? If someone, military or political, could come up with, with an end to worldwide terrorism, would there not be an immediate Nobel Peace Prize and a clamor for this person to become king of the world? If a humble man came preaching love and serving of others, would suffer unjustly, die on a cross and rise again, would that change the world forever? He did, and it has. We proclaim that from the mountaintops and from the deepest valleys. Jim Collins in his book Good to Great says that if you want a great institution, you have to get the right people on the bus. People, we know that bus. We know the bus driver. And that father intends to stop wherever you are and to pick you up and take you across the divide to life and life eternal. Today, that scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today, today, nothing is the same. Alleluia. Amen. Please rise and sing.